is Shingarai Denho Maburute. Welcome to the Triple E thirty ninety seven ECE design demo video. I'll be going through Njabulo, Mazibuku, and I's design implementation. The title for our project is the Smart Alarm Clock. So let me introduce you to the IoT space. As you can see, what you're trying to do is to control our buzzy old friend with our day-to-day -day devices like laptops, desktops, and phones. The only way we can do that is to give wireless connection power to the alarm to not only make it a mechanical device, but also a, net a networked one. We need to connect all involved electronics to a local access network so that they can be able to communicate with each other, thereby making our clock gain a little bit more intelligent. Sensors are the electronics gateway to the physical world and the device needs to process this information to be useful to us. Now the previous pictures were oversimplified models. The actual hardware going into this device is more complex. Our main brain of the alarm, the processor, of the sensors is the Raspberry Pi Zero. We chose this model because it's capable for a lot of applications, all at the same time minimizing cost and size. We definitely wouldn't want to be carrying a clock the size of a refrigerator. The Pi, which is at the top left, is capable of connecting to all other hardware peripherals. These include sensors like the light dependent resistor. Um, at the bottom right next to the button and and push buttons or the output devices like the speaker at the bottom left due to high volume of these pins it allows us to connect a lot of devices and easily scale our project to something even more useful it has various interface capabilities from the i2c uart and the spi just to name the most ubiquitous of them. The RAM size allows us to use a whole operating system in a very small device, making it easy for us to just SSH to correct or improve our functionalities through remote programming. In order for us to actually hear the alarm, we need to amplify our system and to use the green amplifier that is next to the speaker. This was powerful enough and, also, and for an alarm that could be used at least once a day, without it being too expensive and huge in size. The display is useful for us to get a reminder of when we should be waking up without reaching for our phones and entering the website. Because, you know, we have time for that. The display was selected as it uses a minimal number of GPIO ports and is capable of the I2, I2C and SPI interfaces, which has a huge community in open source making it easier for the programmers to work with their code efficiently. The speaker and display don't require audio jack or HDMI. That makes it workable with the Pi Zero and much easier to program. Now let's move on to the API, which is the application user interfaces, which are incorporated with our device. Let's start with the hardware and move on to the software, which from the slide is the right to the left. Sound signal is the analog, therefore our pins should be in the pulse width modulation form, where we can get various degrees of pitch and volume. Some sensors like the button needs on two states, making the default binary the best way of interfacing with the Pi. This whole programming is done using the Python programming language, which is represented by the middle diagram with two snakes. It is linking the hardware with the software. For us to store our states, they need to be a server, and the one used for this project was the Apache web server. It hosts the website, which was programmed using three web development packages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The server provides the Pi with a local website corresponding to its static IP address. For our Apache server to work with Python script, a module called WSGI was used. Now this connection is bi-directional. The website affects the hardware. The hardware affects the software. Now, 
let's get on to the actual nitty gritty of the practi practicality of this whole project. For the demo, I'll set an alarm and play the Epic Metrics soundtrack because that is the best way to wake up. So the procedure is ideally that you set an alarm using your phone or laptop. You run the Python script so it will be able to update the hardware. The top right picture is the implemented smart clock hardware. In order to, int to not intimidate the user with wires and naked connection, we made our Pi box because that is the cheapest and same time recycled 3D printed case I could get hold of. Now the main drawback to this smart clock is that you have to be on the same local network to access the Apache served website. Therefore the alarm is only set when you are at home. Before I show you the sound demo and end my video, there's a question I've been meaning to answer. So what is the bigger picture here? What motivated me to even spend many hours designing this circuit? I mean, it is just a clock. Why would I have sleepless nights just to make a speaker work? Well, as an engineering student, I can tell you for sure that time accounted per course is limited, and so is the budget. I myself am a productivity junkie, and during this time of corona, I struggled a lot in trying to get myself to follow a coherent sleep schedule. And also waking up because, you know, snooze button. After my meeting with my peers, I had a question involving how I can make this useful to deep sleepers, such as these guys. <laughs> so as you can see, since our clock is smart, it can use a motion sensor to detect if you actually moved out of bed after you switched off the alarm. And if there isn't any movement, whether the alarm is ringed or turned off, the band will start vibrating. A text-to-speech program will then be enabled to give you the appropriate boost to wake up. My idea going forward is to link geezers to turn on 30 minutes before alarm to minimize the electric bill and save more energy. This can even be scaled to kettles, which will start to boil at an estimated time based on the past experience. These applications would really thrive with the incorporation of machine learning models for optimization. This is to empower everyone so that they could have, in terms of productivity, the best days of their lives. Now let's get on to the demo. Let's start by running that Python script. Go to our terminal, python demo.py. Good. Go to any browser. Anyone should work. Um, I'll go to this field browser and just type the IP address, it's already saved. Yes, this is the website and we just need to set the alarm, set the days. Let's say we only want to wake up at nine, during the weekdays at 10 minutes to six. Set our MP3, we want a podcast, put the URL, write the volume, individual message, I don't really care about that. Cool. Um, I'll then move on to the hardware implementation when this alarm will be tested. So I need to set up the alarm active or we can now test the alarm. Thank you very much for watching the video.